Hi, I'm Jen, and this is Spinning in Cowgirl Boots. And today I'm spinning with some fiber from a local source for me, local for me. It's uh, Lynn's Texas Fibers. I bought, I bought about a pound of that at a local fiber show, and I'm really liking it. It's nice, it's well prepared, it's really soft. And like I said, I have a pound, so I'm going to be spinning it for a while. You know what else? Today is July the 3rd. It is one day before the United States of America celebrates her birthday again. I don't know how many people are aware of this. But in the years running up to the Declaration of Independence and then the war that's, that followed, spinning and knitting and weaving and doing everything that it took to make yourself your own clothes was an act of rebellion. It was political. It was highly encouraged. Now, if you've uh, followed my blog at all, then you know that I'm a total amateur am a historian, not formally trained, and I only uh, I only know what I want to know because I follow my my interests. I follow my heart. Most of what I know about early American knitting comes from a book called No Idle Hands by Anne Mac McDowell. It comes from this book right here. If you get a chance, pick up a copy, check one out from the library. It's it's a big book, but it's an easy read and pretty interesting. So according to No Idle Hands, if you were living in the colonies leading up to the war, then you were probably very upset at the amount of taxes you had to pay. British government was broke after years and years of very costly foreign wars. They needed money, and like every government in the history of ever, when they need money, they raise taxes. British government had passed a lot of laws and had done its very best to keep textile manufacturing of all kinds out of the colonies. No spinning jennies, no stocking making machines, no sweater machines, no knitting, no uh, automated mechanized weaving of any kind. And the reason, of course, was to keep the people who lived in the colonies dependent on British imports. They had to buy from British manufacturers, and they had to pay the taxes to the British government when they bought them. So as an act of rebellion, people living in the colonies, the Americans, started boycotting all kinds of British products, especially textiles wasn't enough to stop drinking tea. You were expected to clothe yourself in homespuns. Now, if you were poor or even uh, middle class, that probably wasn't much of a change for you. That's probably what you had been doing the entire time. But for well-to-do families, this was a conscious choice. And it fell to the women who took up the cost with enormous gusto to show their patriotism they stopped buying fabric and they started making their own. The Daughters of Liberty was an organization formed right after the Sons of Liberty came into being and what the Daughters of Liberty did in the beginning was organize what they called spinning bees and spinning bees, which I guess had been sort of social and low-key, became enormously fierce competitions where women spun and knitted and wove in public. And they competed against each other to see who could do the most, to see who could be the most productive. And it was to encourage women, of course, to be independent of British imports, to make their own. Now after war broke out, making your own clothes wasn't something you did for political reasons. It was something you did so that you had clothes. Once the war broke out, there was no more imports from Britain, whether you were willing to pay for them or not. 
and women, very well-to-do women, found themselves all alone in their household. The men were gone. Their husbands were gone. Their sons were gone. The male servants, most of them, were gone. And they had to run everything. Their homes, they had to keep track of their families. They had to support their children. They had to run their farms and any businesses that they had. And they had to make all their own clothes, not just for themselves and their families, but for that army that was out fighting in the war. In fact, keeping the soldiers clothed and fed was an enormous problem. I mean, George Washington went before uh, whatever they called it, whatever the early version of Congress was called, I can't remember, but he stood up one winter and told them that he's putting out men in the field practically naked. That little book, No Idle Hands, is full of one story after another of um, a prominent woman who spent all of those years darning every sock she could find and collecting every blanket she could find and spent sitting up half the night, night after night after night, knitting as many socks as she could and then smuggling them out to the troops. In fact, Martha Washington, who accompanied her husband, to the battles and lived in the camp with officer wives was known for her non-stop knitting. Even after the war when she was the first first lady she walked around with her knitting needles constantly because that was part of the image that was part of the early American woman no matter how much money you had. If you had pride in your new country you Bun, and you knit it and you wove and you made all of your own clothes even if you could afford to buy them so there you go happy birthday America and in honor of you I'll be spinning and knitting of course I'd be doing that every other day of the year but you know what today it's for you happy 4th of July everybody